Uh, so I'm Farida Sahrawi. Uh, I'm working with uh, Professor Federica Capelluti's uh, research group, which is uh, solar cells. Uh, so we work mostly on modeling, uh, optoelectronic modeling of uh, solar cells. And today I'll be uh, talking about uh, my work uh, for the PhD, which is entitled uh, Light Trapping Enhanced uh, Quantum Dot Solar Cells. So first, uh, I'll give a, an introduction on uh, what the intermediate band solar cell is. So with uh, traditional solar cells, we uh, sing with a single junction, we have uh, the absorption of a photon that, is, uh, that has an energy above the band gap of the material. And uh, this uh, generates an electron hole pair that's uh, absorbed and uh, that are collected. Uh, while with an intermediate band solar cell, we have this intermediate band material, which allows us to absorb two uh, lower energy photons, uh, which are equal to the energy of, uh, the total energy of the band gap. And so this uh, allows us to achieve much higher efficiencies that are actually comparable to those uh, achievable by multi-junction solar cells, which is, are in the range of 60% or even beyond uh, that for uh, solar concentration. And the uh, intermediate band theory requires that we have very strong and similar first and second photo generation rates. And uh, we also, uh, requ this requires uh, some optimization on the electrical side, but uh, mostly uh, we require some high, very high optical absorption. Uh, and then we have to have high uh, half filling of the intermediate band, which means that the, the intermediate band layer, which is this one, is half filled to allow uh, enough electrons to move from the valence band to the intermediate band, and then enough uh, electrons to move uh, out to the conduction band. And then, so what we're using are three five quantum dots as this intermediate band material, because they allow us to have these confined states uh, through their 3D confinement, uh, and these uh, these quantum dots uh, are embedded within the material. Uh, however, the challenge with the quantum dots is that uh, this requires a very high absorption coefficient, which is difficult to achieve by growing, uh, which is also only possible to achieve by growing a very large uh, quantum dot stack. However, with practical uh, from practical standpoint, it's very difficult to get this high uh, large stacks because you get uh, defects in the material as well as an open circuit voltage uh, penalty. We also have another issue with uh, the intermediate band solar cells that, are, that have been fabricated in recent years. So the problem of uh, thermal escape, where, which competes with the uh, optical emission. So here we see that at very high solar concentration, this allows us to have optical emission. But then if, if uh, the solar concentration is not high enough, we actually find that uh, the carriers are escaping thermally. And uh, so this competition is one of the main topics that we tackle in this, uh, in this work. And also, so this is, uh, thermal emission is, is uh, competing always with the second photon absorption. So this requires that we use these light trapping techniques. Uh, and so we see here that uh, for without light trapping for the, the green line here, uh, this it requires a very large number of layers, which are around a thousand, to just to overcome the single gap efficiency limit. And then when we use light trapping, so we increase the optical path length of the cell by 10 times, we can actually reduce the number of layers significantly to less than 100. But then to uh, by using full light trapping, which is uh, 50 times uh, the optical path length, we get a much, much lower number, or minimum number of quantum dot layers to overcome the single gap efficiency limit. And then this uh, light trapping also affects the competition between the second photon absorption and the thermal escape. So without light trapping with, with the solid lines, we see that uh, the second photon actually beats this, uh, this thermal escape at very highest concentration, as we mentioned previously. But when we use light trapping for the dotted lines, we see that this competition is relaxed significantly. And so our work in this uh, project consists of uh, using these concepts. Uh, so there are uh, already de uh, developed concepts like uh, engineering of the quantum dot material to minimize the open circuit voltage penalty, and then using light trapping to enhance the short circuit current density, and then using thin film topologies to have lightweight and flexible uh, solar cells that can be used for space applications. And combining these concepts together, together enables us to develop this TFQD uh, concept. And so the TFQD project, which uh, I've been doing my PhD as, as uh, part of, 
basically combines them. So TFKD stands for Thin Film Quantum Dot. And we use uh, also readily available technologies such as molecular beam epitaxy to grow the quantum dot uh, stacks. And then we use epitaxial liftoff in order to uh, remove the, the active region, so the active material of the solar cell to get very thin film uh, cells. And finally, we use the nanoimprint lithography for the, as the fabrication technique to get the photonic structures that will, will be discussed in this lecture. And uh, this is all complemented by electrical and optical simulations. So what is basic, the basic concept of uh, light trapping? So when we, as we see here on the left, we have a single pass of light where uh, some of the light is absorbed in the absorber, uh, uh, of, which is the solar cell. And then some of it is uh, transmitted. And in the beginning, some of it is uh, initially reflected at the front surface. So what we aim to do is increase the amount of light that's absorbed. So if we add a backside mirror, this allows us to instantly double the, the optical path length. And this results in this factor of two. So uh, this gives us a better chance to absorb most of the light that's incoming. And when we see the current voltage characteristics, we see that the short circuit current density is enhanced. But, and uh, as well as in uh, the external quantum efficiency around the band edge. But for the gallium arsenide cell, it, because the gallium arsenide is already absorbing a lot, we don't see a lot of enhancement. And so we focus mostly on the quantum dot region. The maximum limit for this uh, kind of enhancement is, uh, has been derived by the Yablonovich limit, which is around 4n squared when using a Lambertian scatter on the backside. So 4n squared is uh, uh, dependent on the material where n is the refractive index of this material. And for, for our work, uh, since we uh, Lambertian scatters are uh, the maximum limit, we use periodic diffraction gratings to try to achieve the same uh, amount of enhancement. So by tuning the grating period and for different wavelengths, we can diffract the incoming light to higher order modes. And what we aim to do is uh, to, to, so we, we first look at this critical angle, which is theta C. If the, the diffracted light is inside the, this uh, theta C, so if, it's, if the diffraction angle is lower than theta C, actually light escapes from the top surface. However, if the diffracted light is uh, propagating at an, uh, an order that's uh, like an angle that's higher than theta C, it's totally internally dif uh, diffracted or reflected at the front surface. And so this uh, implies light trapping or efficient light trapping. And so uh, we integrate these light trapping concepts into the quantum dot solar cells. So from the single pass, we, uh, we start with the substrate. So the active material is already on the substrate. And then with using the epitaxial liftoff, we can remove this substrate and then you go to the double pass configuration where a planar reflector doubles the optical path length. And then in, with the full light trapping, we, we can use uh, textured reflectors. So uh, using the methods that we mentioned previously. And higher enhancement is obviously uh, with, with the full light trapping uh, methods. So when we look at the external quantum efficiency of a single junction gallium arsenide cell, we see that light trapping, again, does not impact uh, much this, uh, this EQE, except at the band edge. And then for a quantum dot solar cell, which is very low absorbing, we see the, the very high enhancement in this range. So with the double pass, we see doubling of this, uh, this EQE at uh, beyond the 900 uh, or 0 0.9 micrometers wavelength. And then for the full light trapping, we see this uh, very nice enhancement. And th these are simulations, and recently we uh, found through experimental characterization uh, that uh, we can double uh, this uh, short circuit current uh, that's coming from this, uh, or the photocurrent coming from the quantum dots using a backside reflector. So in red, we see the double pass configuration, and in black, we see the wafer configuration, which is a single pass. And we use electromagnetic simulations that, uh, that use the rigorous coupled wave analysis method to optimize these gratings. So the, the rigorous coupled wave analysis is very efficient for periodic structures because it uh, allows us to expand the Maxwell's equations using uh, these Floquet uh, functions. And uh, it uses a staircase of approximation as seen here. And by, uh, through our optimizations, we found that the aspect ratio, which is the height over period, is the most important uh, parameter geometrically. And so at uh, around the 0 0.3 aspect ratio is where we get the highest enhancement. 
So these are our cells uh, of all the different configurations. We, we start first by optimizing the front surface for uh, anti-reflection. So we see we got these uh, nanostructured uh, gratings. And then on the back side, we optimize them for uh, diffraction. And uh, we focus on the best performing uh, solar cells. So these, uh, these solar cells with double-sided uh, uh, double sided gratings. From the field intensity maps, uh, we can see that the planner doesn't show this, uh, this diffraction effect, obviously. And uh, in the, with, the, with the backside gratings, we get this enhancement using the diffraction gratings. And uh, so this enhancement corresponds to an increase in the short circuit current density. Uh, through these optimizations, we, we sh show here the absorbance and reflectance spectrum. So first on the left, we, we uh, minimize the reflectance to become way below uh, 5% uh, for a very broad band. And uh, th this is only achievable using these nanostructured uh, gratings. And then with, when we look at the absorbance spectra, which translates directly to uh, short circuit current, uh, for, uh, for the active region, we uh, compute this, uh, this photo, the photo current from this region of the quantum dots where we see the highest enhancement. And for the gallium ars arsenide, as we said, the enhancement is not significant. But uh, when we use this uh, double side gratings, the, actually the, the enhancement in the quantum dot region is, is very significant and uh, allows us to enhance the efficiency in the overall cell. So this, uh, this short circuit current density enhancement is one of our metrics. So we see that for the planner structure with the mirror, we get around uh, two times enhancement. And then with only the backside, we get around 16 times. And finally, with the double side, we get up to 32 times uh, enhancement. And then this is all for the first photon, but for the second photon, we can use other methods such as a guided mode resonance, which has been explored in other work. So the efficiency uh, of the light trapping is relative always to the Lambertian limit, which is, uh, or the Oblonovich limit also. Uh, it's referred to uh, as the Oblonovich limit in this work. And uh, so this corresponds to 4n squared, which is around 50 times for uh, this, uh, for gallium arsenide. And we reach around 94% of that uh, possible limit. And finally, so uh, looking at the fabrication of these uh, gratings, we can see that uh, uh, our work has been on three topologies. So we had the, the planner and then the blazed, which is a uniperiodic uh, grating. And then finally, we did, uh, we realized the parental gratings all on uh, gallium arsenide cells, so without the quantum dots. But uh, so we, we look at their diffraction properties and here we can see the SEM imaging. So how the, these gratings look in real life after fabrication. So these are the blazed uh, uniperiodic gratings. And then here are uh, the pyramidal three-dimensional gratings. And uh, these were fabricated using nano-imprint lithography, but other methods are also possible. And finally, looking at the, the characterization of such gratings, we uh, first observe the uh, total and specular reflectance. So the specular is uh, direct reflectance. And the difference between the total and the specular reflectance uh, corresponds directly to uh, the diffused light. So the amount of light that's diffused within the structure. So uh, this is the, the difference. And that uh, so the bigger difference means more diffused light into the structure. So for the planner, there's obviously no uh, no diffused light, and uh, for the blazed grating, there's a lot, which is in pink. And then in the green is the pyramidal grating, which is the highest performing one. And simulations uh, uh, align very well with the measurements. Uh, and I'd like to thank uh, our solar cell team and everyone for their uh, collaborations, and obviously the organizers of this event, uh, the IEEE student branch, and I'd like to thank the funding agencies of the TFQD project, and uh, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Farid, for your very interesting talk. I would ask to the people who is watching on YouTube, please, if you have questions, just write them down in the comments of the YouTube video. But I already have two questions. So you talked about uh, simulation, but it's not very clear to me what you mean with simulation. I mean, do you use density functional theory? Uh, for the, the characterization of the material? No, we, you already have... Uh, for the uh, gallium arsenide, and uh, uh, you already have a lot of models that are available. And for the quantum dots, we have our own uh, in-house developed simulator that uh, 
for the uh, Poisson drift diffusion, uh, so PDD uh, simulations. And uh, so most of the electromagnetic simulations do not require very uh, intense uh, models like uh, the ones obtained with DFT. Okay. Uh, second question revolves around the process the process variations because you you shown some different kind of nanostructures, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, in one of the last slides, and did you try to simulate all these uh, structures? What are the differences? So this 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 slide, you mean, or uh, the one before? Yeah, yeah, I mean this one. Ah, so yes, uh, we for, for these uh, structures because they're very thick. Uh, because the, uh, all of these ones are, do not have the epitaxial liftoff and as well as uh, the gratings, so these are all on wafer. So we, we did some uh, electromagnetic simulations again, uh, and these were the results, uh, the ones on the right. Um, so obviously they're, they're reflectance uh, simulations, but uh, you can also do the, the same absorption, like absorbance simulations, and try to estimate the current that you can get. But uh, the difficulty is always to integrate both um, the like the final solar cells, so the contacts and um, all of the layers that you need for uh, to, for the solar cell to work and to, to collect the light to, to collect the uh, electrons. But uh, and also to integrate at the same time the diffraction gratings, because if you see here, so so the contacts uh, and these layers are difficult to integrate uh, on the diffraction gratings. So this is. The processing uh, is still in, pro in progress, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. I see we still have one question from the audience. Can you indicate a potential use case of the solar cells that you characterized? Um, yes, of course. Um, so potential use case, uh, we can we can refer to the TFKD, like the mission. Um, so basically, since we're trying to minimize this uh, this active region uh, thickness, so all of these these uh, these solar cells, the, the Q, QDSCs, are all in the range of three microns or five microns maximum thickness. So this allows us to go very uh, thin. So with the active region, and this when we go very thin, we can make it actually very lightweight and flexible. So you uh, in the final uh, realized solar cells with epitaxial liftoff, you have uh, flexible cells. And th these ones uh, have a very high power to weight ratio. So the power is much, uh, so the, the rel uh, relationship between the power and the weight is obviously really high, the ratio, sorry. And so th this can be used in uh, space solar cells. And um, this uh, project has, be has been, uh, like one of the partners of the project was actually uh, a, a company that, uh, that produces uh, space solar cells, so Thales. Okay. Thank you very much. I see that we do not have any other questions. So I thank you very much for the interesting talk and for, the, for answering all the questions.